In January, at least 14 new Republican pro-life women will take the oath in the House of Representatives. That number will include seven Congresswomen who defeated Democrats in last week's election. We attribute their success to the fact that life is winning in America, and regardless of the uncertainty in the presidential election, it's clear to see that life is not a losing issue this year, um, especially because we see an unprecedented number of pro-life women being elected to Congress. Those newly elected representatives join 11 incumbent GOP pro-life women who won re-election. In a statement, SBA list president Marjorie Dannenfelser said, these gains are a repudiation of abortion extremism and further evidence that life is a winning issue in politics. And this is a diverse group of women who will no doubt stand up for the unborn. Uh, they come from various backgrounds. We have Maria Salazar, who was one of our endorsed candidates. Uh, she's a Cuban-American woman who understands the right to life. We have Yvette Harrell in New Mexico, who was newly elected. She is the first woman uh, from the Cherokee Nation to be elected to Congress for the Republican Party. And it's not just happening in the House. At least six will be part of the Senate in January, including re-elected incumbent Joni Ernst of Iowa. Um, I'm going to share my favorite psalm with you and let it be a reminder of how we can get through this difficult time. And my favorite psalm is Psalm 121. And it goes like this. I lift up my eyes to the hills, and where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The founder and chairman of the nonprofit Christian ministry Liberty Council spoke out about the election, saying these pro-life women will bring new energy to Washington to preserve precious pre-born children. This is another important step to making the womb a safe place again in America. Mark Martin, CBN News. Well, joining us by Skype is Penny Nance, president of Concerned Women for America. And Penny, welcome to 700 Club Interactive. Well, my great honor, Gordon. Thank you for having me today. Were you surprised by the surge of Republican pro-life women being elected to the House of Representatives? No, but Nancy Pelosi was very surprised. She was expecting a blue wave. Um, Concerned Women for America drove 8,000 miles on a bright pink bus that on one side said women for Amy Coney Barrett, on the other side said she prays, she votes. We went to all the battleground states. We turned out pro-life, conservative Christian women to the polls, and this is what happened. Certainly, we're still struggling to see what happened in the presidential race, but we do, as you said, have a very bright spot in that there were no losses of pro-life women. There was there were gains for the Republicans, 13 new pro-life women elected and counting. There's about five others that actually may make it across the finish line. So it was a great day. As hard as this has been, this has been a, it was a great day for pro-life women. Well, let's talk specifically about Florida and the number of Latina women who were elected. Uh, is that going to be the new face of the pro-life movement? Well, and we welcome diversity within our movement, and we've known on the grassroots level that it very much exists, but you're right. We're growing in our ranks among all different uh, demographics, and we are welcoming it. Florida is certainly one, but we're also seeing it. Uh, you mentioned a member of the Cherokee Nation. African-American women are so strong at Concern Women for America. We all strongly believe in life. We believe in an ethic of life, supporting it from conception to natural death, but also biblical worldview. So this is what you're seeing. You're seeing women that were energized in this next, this past election. You saw women that, that very much um, identified with with justice, now justice, Amy Coney Barrett, and came out to the polls to allow their voices to be heard. It was an Esther moment for us. That's great. It is definitely a victory what's going on. And Penny, I just wanted to ask you, how can pro-life women find their voice in politics these days? It's essential. 
I would beg your viewers who feel a calling in their heart in any way, come to, for one, one way you can do that is come to ConcernWomen.org and help, let us teach you. I wrote a book called Feisty and Feminine, a rallying cry for conservative women that equips women to be able to learn the issues, the hard issues of the day, so that when these issues come up around the playground or um, at, at your kid's school or at your church, you don't have to look at your shoes because you don't know what to say. I think Queen Esther is a great example because she prepared, she prayed, and then she spoke. And I think that's what we have to do at this moment in order to protect life, in order to protect all the gains that we made in the Trump administration. Administration. Because I will tell you that Joe Biden has publicly said he believes in public funding for abortion. Needs to, and he and Kamala Harris plan to wipe out the Hyde Amendment. They plan to make us force us to pay for abortions in other countries and in this country anytime, any reason, any number. We're going to have to fight. Yeah. Well, we do have some viewer questions. And this one is coming from Sonia. She's writing us on YouTube. What does all of this mean? Can we finally get rid of abortion? We still have work to do, but the last three Supreme Court justices, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, which is why I was running around the country in a bright pink bus, the, the Supreme Court can decide whether or not Roe v. Wade stands, and but then it doesn't strike it down immediately. It throws it back to the states. And so we have to fight on each individual playing field around the country. But if we're able to strike down Roe v. Wade, we can at least allow, their, allow the people to have the voice. So, um, Roe v. Wade in 1973 usurped the voice of the people and took away our rights to speak. The United States our laws do not in any way match our beliefs. We are one of seven countries in the world with the most um, liberal abortion laws, allowing abortions after 20 weeks. So we have a lot of work to do. It is not over. It is a fight between life and between death. And we have to equip, our, equip ourselves spiritually. We have to educate ourselves. And then we have to have courage. Ladies, it is up to us to speak into this moment. Penny, I've got to ask this. Uh, back in the 1990s, actually under the Clinton administration, he signed into law a ban on late-term abortions. Could we possibly see that kind of bill get through this Congress? Well, you still have a Democrat-controlled House. Right. So we still are that we're the Republicans, the pro-lifers are short votes. Um, we've still got to flip some seats in the, in the House and we still have work to do. But yes, the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act, I'm old enough to have actually worked on that, um, passed. Late-term abortion should be an easy one to win. The 20-week ban, something Concerned Women for America has worked on for many years, should be able to get traction. But we have to change some things. Now we're set up in the Supreme Court. If we're able to pass it, I believe that it would, would withstand judicial scrutiny. I believe, I know that that law is constitutional based on civil rights, based on the 14th Amendment. So. All that to say, we have work to do. We've got to put forward the right legal cases, which Concern Women for America is going to be doing. And we're going to have to find those uh, pro-life Democrats. We've got, to, we've got to speak forward. We can do it. We can flip them. We can work on the conscience of our people that are elected. We can pray for them. But we all have to work together. All right. Yeah. Well, Penny Nance, thanks for being with us. Uh, for the latest on all the news regarding the election and what we can expect from the upcoming Congress, the up, upcoming administration, go to CBNNews.com or download the CBN News Channel app today. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.